Good morning and welcome back to my channel, High Tunnel and Field Tomato Production. Today is August the 10th. I've been busy and haven't had time to do much of a uh, video lately, but you can see uh, this is uh, some of my mornings picking. There's about 20 pounds in each of those boxes, and uh, those came out of just one row, really, of my high tunnel. So let me make some adjustments right here, and I'll talk to you just a minute. Get my camera up here just a little bit. Okay, uh, I want to kind of correct something that I told you probably in my last video, and it has to do with bacterial spec. And I have uh, inadvertently been diagnosing it wrong. What I've actually had on my tomatoes is uh, anthracnose. As I've told you, I live in a valley, and it is really humid down where my high tunnels are. And anthracnose is kind of an in-general term that, uh, for a disease that gets on lots and lots of uh, vegetables and fruits and things. And so I don't know if it's exactly the same strain, but it's just a generic term. So let, let me get a couple of tomatoes. Now, I hope you can see it. I think you can. This is anthracnose. It'll start off with a little spot, and then it'll be a little sunken, kind of wet, soft spot, and eventually it will turn black. And uh, if you don't pull that tomato, eventually it's going to look like this. This has got it all over it. This is one that sat there for several days. And there's really the best fungicide that I know for this. Uh, yeah, right here, see there's a little tiny spot, and that will eventually be that big. It just runs the tomato, I throw them away, they're of no use to me. Uh, but the uh, only thing that I know that really does much good on is called Quadris. And uh, if you're a small gardener, small fella, you may want to uh, get a jug of it and split it with two or three different tomato folks. It's uh, I'm, I can only guess a gallon jug's about $120 or so, but of course that'll last you a while. But the one that does, the, there's several formulas of Quadris. The one that uh, I have not been using, but I think does the best job according to what I read, is called Quadris Top. That's Q-U-A-D-R-I-S, Quadris Top, T-O-P. And it's a, uh, there's actually two chemicals in there, and it does a really good job. Now the thing is, you've got to start spraying these early. And I've told y'all that for me, a fungicide program is, is number one. And I got off schedule this year and it caused me a little bit of problem. But uh, fungicides come in what group? There'll be a group four, group 11, and they work in different ways. And you don't want to use one two times in the row because the plant might build up some resistance to it. So you may want to come in with like Bravo or, or Chloramphenil. Uh, one week and then the next week come in with Quadris and then uh, in there if you've got problems with bacterial spec and bacterial spot you want to come in there with some copper hydroxide and, and I told you maybe Tannos which is really expensive and uh, uh, you've just got to have a, uh, a several different ones to keep up from building resistance. Now I've done really good this year and I did great last year, didn't have any problems with anything last year, but this year I got off schedule a little bit and got a little bit of this, but maybe only one out of uh, 50 tomatoes or more do I have this. I did spray and I think I've stopped it. But now once that little spot starts, you're, it, it's going to happen. You're done for, it's going to swell up and get big, so you might as well just throw them away. But I just want to correct that and tell you all that I have uh, my county agent down in Searcy County, Sherry, uh, Sherry Sanders is her name. She uh, had some pictures on the internet and I looked at them and I realized from what she was telling me that I had been misdiagnosing this. And so without the right, uh, I mean copper hydroxide won't stop it. You can put that on there all day long and you're wasting your time. You've got to have, chlorothanil will help, but I'm telling you, you'd be better off getting, if you've got that problem, go ahead and spend the money. Uh, take a jug, good Lord, that jug will last you 10 years if you've got a small place and uh, store it in, the, in a place for the winter where and out of the heat and everything and it'll just last you a long time. You can 
split the cost with some neighbors that grow tomatoes, but I highly advise you to do that. Uh, we've had the best uh, season so far this year, 2021, as far as volume of tomatoes. I've had 15 pounds plus on every plant. We're still picking uh, today, tomorrow, and the next day is going to be right at 100 degrees. I've been real fortunate that I've got good irrigation. I've been keeping them moist. I've not lost hardly any to the heat, but they are ripening so quick now I've got to get them sold. And so I'm not going to talk long this morning. I've got to go back down there. It's, uh, I don't know, it's 930, and I've only got another hour. Once they get warm, I won't pick them. Something I don't do now, uh, I'll save this one right here. It's got a stem on it. We pull our stems. I do not, especially this time of year, I don't take my hand and my thumb and pop them off like a lot of people do. I use a pair of pliers, and you see I'm dirty. I put them right here, and I pull them with the pliers. The reason for, if you've got big, strong hands, uh, and you push that thing, you're liable to bruise this tomato if it's very ripe. And that bruise may not show up for eight hours. Well, I'm going to take some of these to the grocery store, and I don't want them showing up tomorrow with a bruise on them. I, I sell them perfect tomatoes. So, uh, But do take your stems off. If you put them in a box, those stems are going to punch each other. So that's just something I do. So uh, y'all keep watching. I'll give you another report pretty shortly. Thanks for watching. Bye.